Hey fellow tennis nerds and welcome to another tennis nerd vlog video. This time I will talk about a few different tools I've been testing to play better tennis. I've been lost in a kind of a land of racket confusion lately. I've been testing a lot of different frames. I have no idea what racket I'm supposed to use for match play. I know a lot of you ask what racket is your tournament racket and it's been really difficult for me to answer that question. For a while I felt like I would go with the Clash Tour, but then I felt like I couldn't get really the control I need for my game, so I got back to my old Liquid Metal Radical Tour. Then that felt too difficult to use when you play these younger guys who hit with a lot of spin. And I did really like the Prince Extreme Tour 310 that I recently reviewed, but in the end that string pattern also felt too open at times. Of course it could be as a choice of string uh, in that racket because it played a bit better I think with the Ionix Polytor strike. Then I was also testing the Gravity Pro, the new head Gravity Pro that I've also reviewed. I really love that racket. It felt familiar and comfortable. 1820 string pattern gives me great directional control, a 330-ish swing weight which uh, covers the stability that I need for my game. 100 square inch uh, roundish head. I don't always love the round head shapes but this one doesn't bother me as much so that offered me a bit more room for spin and a bit bigger sweet spot. So it's not too flat uh, like a 95 square inch 1820 pattern racket. The thin beam also makes it feel great on volleys and slice shots so it's almost like this racket was made for me or possibly Alex Zverev but you know what I mean. So in this video you will see a lot of play with the head gravity pro and also some shots with the mole this racket is based from which is the head utex speed mp which I hit briefly with. I borrowed it from a friend of mine and um, that's another nice racket, it has a bit of a different layup and feel, so it's not the same racket, but the similar mold, just a bit different layup. I've also been playing around with a few different oldies that bring back memories and excite me at times, but makes me also not feel 100% there on all key shots which you need. It's the Head Liquid Metal Instinct MP, the Liquid Metal Radical MP, two great rackets. I really love the Liquid Metal technology that came out in the early 2000s. I've also been playing with the Bubblelot Aero Pro Drive Original, the first version that Rafa uses under paint job, and the Wilson Blade 2015-16-19 that I also borrowed from a hitting partner. All great rackets. The only one I really feel 100% connected to is the Blade 2015. I used to play with the close pattern version the 1820 and uh, that, that still plays great but this 1619 feels a bit easier to use these days so uh, I might just uh, play around with that a bit more I've been um, using it with MSV Focus Hex which is a great budget string and it also plays really nice in this racket even when it loses tension uh, so I will talk more about strings in a coming video and possibly a lot about like budget strings because I know it's not easy to keep buying string reels for $200 and um, you're breaking a lot of strings. So let's um, have a topic where we talk about the different budget strings that are good for the wallet and good for the racket as well. But the issue with the blade in the end might be for me that I don't get the same plow through, uh, the lower swing weight that I get from the heavier Gravity Pro. So this is all the confusion kind of a racket nerd goes through. I would like you to comment if you recognize any of this with all the switching back and forth and you can't really find the proper feeling that you're looking for. Some Sometimes it's just your footwork, sometimes it's just something you're missing in the whole racket setup. I've been doing a lot of work on writing down a clear process for this, for how you choose your racket. This has been kind of part of the work of Tennis Nerd uh, the last couple of years. So I've started a series about that topic on the Tennis Nerd Patreon page. I know it's a paywall there, I need to find ways to make some money with Tennis Nerd, so I think Patreon is one good way to do it. So you pay $2 a month, which is pretty much less than the price of a coffee in most countries, and you will get unique content every week and access to some videos that's coming up and written content that is only on Patreon. So I hope you find it worth your while to support Tennis Nerd on Patreon for only 2 bucks a month. So besides writing this detailed racket guide that I'm publishing there, I've been testing a Pure Arrow VS Tour. So this racket mold, which is based on the Aero Storm, is used by players such as Felix Auger Aliasim, Jack Sock, Marco Cecchinato and Viktor Troischki, to name a few. The old Aero Storm was is quite a stiff and control-oriented racket, so they usually string these frames really low. Like Jack Sock, he strings it below 20 kilos, so or 40 pounds, so it's really a, a low tension frame where you can still get a controlled response. I think it suits players with a more naturally spin-friendly game, where you have 
uh, maybe a Western technique where you hit with a lot more spin than I do. I'm trying to work on that, but I'm not gonna go all the way Jack Sock on my forehand. It's gonna take too much work and it, it's not a natural technique for me. But I did really love this racket on my forehand. The weight of the Tour version compared to the VS standard also helped me drive through the ball on the slice. But on some shots, at least with the string setup, I tried it. Did I did not feel as connected to the ball and I had some issues with volleys, etc. So I have to play around a bit more to see if uh, this can work for me. I doubt I will ever switch to this racket. I think it's too much of a racket for people who play with a lot of topspin and who hit more like uh, Ali Asim and Jack Sock and Cecchinato, which is a completely different game than what I have. So the one that feels the closest to being my next racket at the moment is the Gravity Pro, the Head Gravity Pro. Really nice frame, I have been enjoying it a lot. As you can see in some of the play here, I still have a lot of work on my serve and forehand to do, but it's the racket I've been having the best results with at least. So um, I have high hopes that this could be the one and I will keep testing different string setups because that's where I don't feel at home. I've been testing a string called Torna Big Hitter Rough Blue. It's not a new string, it's kind of a budget string as well. It's softer, plays similar to an all power rough. Plays nice and stiffer racket. Not sure if it's the choice for a more flexible racket like the Gravity Pro in the low 60s. I'm not 100% sure about this string, although I did like it in the Pure Aero VS. I did try the Head Hawk Touch in the Gravity Pro as well, but I might like it uh, even more crisper. So then I tested a set of Technifiber Black Coat as well in orange color. Offers really good control. I might like a bit more spin and I'm not in love with the feel of that string. Might be in my head, but I, that's the feeling I have. It's not uh, really what I enjoy in a string, so I need to play around a bit more with the string setup there and see what can work out. Uh, I have been quite playing quite a lot of tennis recently, every day for a week now, and um, I needed to also do some serious fitness. I do tend to go to the gym every other day, but also wanted to see if I could strengthen my core a bit more and become a bit uh, more limber. Uh, I'm quite stiff, kind of like a pure drive 2012. So I definitely need to become less lazy when stretching and uh, need to work on my movement and make sure I don't get injured because that's I've been having injury issues as you might know if you followed Tennis Nerd for a while with my knee and my wrist and I just want to avoid that at all costs. I also had some shoulder pain so um, especially when you're playing every day it, it starts to get a bit of, a, of an issue. So I decided to follow my wife Lena who usually goes to the Moonstone Wellness Center here in Malta. It's run by a professional trainer called Carmen Mikalev. She does both yoga, pilates and uh, some gym sessions, private sessions and classes. It's a great center. It's uh, She's kind of converted her home into this nice gym and Pilates room and yoga room and it, it looks pretty amazing and it's really impressive to have that kind of facility in your own home. So I was there for a few hours doing yoga and Pilates and um, testing out her gym. Obviously I'm a beginner when it comes to yoga and Pilates so I did really need her instruction but it really helped me I felt to work on my own mobility and my core strength and it was great to stretch out my muscles. I just played two hours of tennis before I came to the, to the Moonstone Wellness and I worked on my breathing which also is important when you play tennis how you breathe in and out especially when you hit the ball you're supposed to breathe out and that's very easy to forget and you especially easy to get tight during a tennis match so it's very important to do these things and to try different new things uh, you might be skeptical at first but I really urge you to test and give it a shot because it, it really helps I think for a lot of tennis players to do both yoga and pilates it might not sound like a logical combo but it's actually a part of the training regime for several top players Players, such as Andy Murray and Novak Djokovic for example so there's definitely something there and if you look at the movement of Novak it's just amazing how he stretches out and I think part of that becomes because he's, he's really focused on uh, being as limber as possible and as mobile as he can on the court it's so important for his game and the same goes for Andy Murray so I really enjoyed this session and thanks to Carmen for uh, giving me all the instruction and, and testing out her equipment and her impressive gym and at Moonstone Wellness so if you're in Malta I suggest you check that out it's a really cool Cool place. They also have a nice roof terrace where I try to relax for a bit after the session. So I'm gonna keep working on that and see what I can uh, improve on and possibly at least 
prevent a lot of injury issues that are common in tennis. If you're interested to combine this, you might not have a center where you're living or you don't know exactly where to start. There's a tennis yoga mobility and injury prevention program that you can subscribe to with the Martin Fitness Method. I've been testing their different fitness programs. I really like the strength agility um, program. So I'm going to try this tennis yoga version of the Martin Fitness Method. Really nice just to have videos and just follow the instructions. Quite easy. You can do it in your own home. You don't need to go anywhere. So I think that really helps. It really helped me with my warm ups and getting fit in the right way, training for tennis and not only going for a run or lifting weights, which is not really going to help your tennis movement, although it's obviously beneficial in your life in general to have better health. If you use the code tennis nerd for your Martin Fitness Method program, you get 10% off. So that's a nice thing that I managed to get with them. Let's talk about the analysis and the strategy of the game, because I think that's important. I know you've been asking for us to cover a bit more tactics and strategy in the Tennis Nerd Academy and that's for sure coming up. We decided we want to focus on the basics of the technique for now and then try to move into different areas of the tennis game later on. But it's coming for sure. One thing that I struggle with is that I enter a tennis match, whether it's a practice match or it's a tournament match, and I usually have no real game plan besides maybe something ultra basic like hit more to his backhand because it's weaker, uh, which works in 70% of all cases because most players' backhands are weaker. But it's still not much of a strategy, it's not something that's gonna help you win a lot of matches. So I'm testing the Functional Tennis Match Journal, which is a, a match journal where you write down your strategy pre-match and make sure you, you followed it post-match. So you actually analyze what happened, the result, how well did you execute your plans. So you have you had a plan A or a plan B? Did you set up match goals, like build points, open up the court, attack the net, etc. And then you can write down positive aspects of what you did and what you need to improve for the next match. Uh, this is just a great uh, way for you to, you know, either teach junior players or players who don't think about this at all, or for yourself to actually put down what's happening in your matches. Because sometimes a tennis match can feel like a car accident. It just happened and you, you lost and you had no idea what happened, what you did wrong or what you did well. So this keeps you more focused on what that, what is actually happening the, in the match and I think that will reap huge benefits for your game. So that's something I'm, I'm testing out and I've been using it for a few matches and, and it helps me think in a different way around my tennis and to set up some goals and really improve my game plans because sometimes I don't even have one. I just go there to enjoy tennis or test a racket and it's not really the proper way to play tennis. Tennis is a deep game and it can be like chess it at, played at 90 miles per hour as Robin Williams said and um, you need to have a plan and you need to execute it and that's what the top guys are doing over and over again so if you really want to get into that I suggest you pick up this match journal and uh, work on it so these are some of the things happening in the tennis nerd universe this is a bit of a vlog format to give you an update we just gave out a racket we had a racket giveaway together with 10x pro congrats to Ben Thompson who won it and um, we're gonna do more giveaways. I'm keen to hear what you would like us to give away. You can put it in the comments below. Next week, I'm going to Marbella. I hope to play some tennis there with my tennis friends and hope to record some content. Later today, I'm heading out to the court with Nick and VJ. We're going to record another Academy video. I hope to have it up next week. Lots of things happening. I really appreciate all the support and the kind comments. If you like to support Tennis Nerd, please buy a racket, a t-shirt or just become a patron at two bucks a month. I uh, also sent out the first newsletter in quite a while. Please subscribe and make sure you don't miss out any Tennis Nerd stuff. Please also share your Tennis Nerd with your friends on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and through tennisnerd.net. Every help to spread the word is of course appreciated. In the end I want to wish you a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis.